Hi, I'm John Lima, editor of The Economy, and this is Frontline. Here with me, I've got Collocation Services provider Green Mountain, and to represent the company, I've got Todd Christian Gillan, CEO of Green Mountain, and I've got Peter Tomares, also se- Chief Sales Officer at Green Mountain. Guys, thanks all for talking to me. Uh, there was a panel this morning here, Data Cloud Nordic, with several collocation providers from Norway, mm-hmm. and it was a bit of a catfight between some of you uh, <laughs> regarding governmental help, especially around financials and venture capitalists. Uh, what is Norway missing in terms of... Um, products that will make it a big, big data center market, for example, like Sweden or Denmark? No, Norway is actually not missing anything. We got all the elements ready for supplying services to the market. We are, if you look into the sustainability part, we're the only country in the Nordics which has a pure sustainable uh, power production. Uh, 98.5% of the power is produced by hydro. If you go to Sweden and Denmark, they have other elements in their power production, which makes them not sustainable in the same way as, as we do. We do. Uh, if you look into the European market, Norway is, uh, Norway is quite close to the UK market. For more data center in Stavanger, uh, we're uh, far closer than the Swedish market. The latency from our data center in Stavanger to, 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 to London Telehouse is, is 8 milliseconds. And uh, there has been a lot of talk about edge data center, it's data centers in Norway, but, but we see ourselves as a supplier of all types of services to the whole European market. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but some of the guys actually put Sweden in the map were guys like AWS, Google, Facebook, especially Facebook in Lulia. Hmm. Um, do you think Norway is missing something in this part of the game or you don't need these big hyperscales to make the market? Um, yeah, and, yeah, and we during the panel debate today we had a lot of discussion about the intense incentives the, the government has given us, and, and from first of January this year the, the tax, the power tax, was reduced by by ninety seven percent, and uh, uh, these national budgets just launched a couple of weeks ago reduced or removed the the property tax element on the equipment in inside the data center. Those were the elements that caused. Uh, uh, uncertainty for, from the major players. Uh, no, we have sorted that out and we are ahead of Sweden and Denmark at the moment and we are pretty sure that we will have some large uh, hyperscale deployment in Norway within a reasonable time. Okay, are we expecting one year, two years? Uh, what sort of talks are going on in the background? There is a lot of talks going on in the background. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, there's quite a lot of the, uh, of the uh, blockchain players who have established themselves in Norway due to the power part, the, the cheap power. We are more competitive than, than both Sweden and Denmark. Uh, so we think there will be more uh, deployment within uh, next year. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Okay, and then Peter. More, sorry, do you want to add something? Yeah, just yeah. A, a quick add on the commercial side. I think that at the moment we have the best commercial uh, offering to the market for all of Europe. Hmm. So, so we are in a Has very no different position now from what we were just a few months or a few years ago. And now I think the marketing part has also speeded up compared to earlier where we were you know, lagging a little bit behind the Swedes and the Danes. They've been very good, but we are catching up, and we're catching up fast. So are you telling them to watch out? Mm. Yes. But you, you could also see that we are, a lot of our, our customers see Nordic as one region, and not only Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. So when Sweden has succeeded, that is, it, yeah, it's a part of the Nordics, and it's also putting the focus on us. So, so for us, it's, it's, it's really good that there has been uh, deployment both in Denmark and Sweden. And I think that a lot of the players are looking to be the first one to establish in, in Norway. Well, when you say it has put some focus on you, but the fact is the hyperscalers have gone to Sweden and Denmark, hmm. uh, not Finland. I think there's one. I think Google's in Finland. Google's Google. in Finland. Uh, but then you have Iceland as well. So there was still something missing around here. But I understand the government has changed. So we can expect a deployment in the next couple of months, next couple of years. I, I'm pretty sure about that. And, and uh, we got all the, the commercials in place and we have currently the best offer to mm. offer to the market. Okay. And, and, and another thing as well that's, that's, that is, is an advantage for Norway is that uh, currently we have a surplus of power in Norway. 
we are producing 20% more power than we are mm. consuming. And as a part of the EU initiatives to, to, to bring more sustainable power in the market, Norway has agreed to increase the power production. So we will have a surplus in the, in the long future as well, which gives, uh, uh, gives a, a prediction on the prices to stay low uh, in, in not the near future, but in the long future. And we are able to deliver fixed prices on power in t up to 10 years agreement at the price level today. So, so then you will get uh, like an, an overview of your cost also in the future for the data. Can I mean, you, if you compare that to the rest of Europe, you actually have a shortage of power in many markets. And that was my next question. Yeah. So can you guys imagine in Norway they'll be exporting electricity for data centers in the mainland? Uh, we do export electricity and... Specific data center uh, electricity to, power. Yes, actually hmm. to Denmark. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of Norwegian power going into some of the data centers there. Uh, but, you know, it would be much easier to export the data than to export the power. Because when you export power, you actually lose parts of, of what you're exporting. Whereas if you just use fiber and you export the data, you lose nothing. So mm. that would be a much better setup and it would be probably more cost effective for the big players out there. Okay. And then big players, colors, massive data centers to be built in the mm. north of Norway. Yeah. yeah. Thoughts? Any thoughts about it? I think the whole of Norway is ideal. Well, when we did the, the site selection from, for our second data center, we decided to put it, put it where the power is produced. And as you know, Norway is a hilly country and, uh, and power is produced all over Norway. So there is a lot of ideal places. When, you, when you're looking into low latency, that latency is not an issue, the north of Norway would be, be ideal. Uh, we, are, we have decided to put it in, in, in the southern part of Norway because we think we are facing a market where the latency is an issue. Okay. Then on Green Mountain, and both of you, and maybe for you as well, in terms of business model, there's quite a few players in the Nordics and also in Norway. So you have Digiplex, um, mm -hmm. Bulk, which yeah. is still building. Uh, what makes you different from all these other guys? The main reason is that we have owners with a long uh, history in Norway. Uh, Smedvik, uh, which uh, owns Green Mountain, has... Uh, 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 has a history going back to 1915. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, development within uh, shipping, oil and gas. Uh, they went out of oil and gas in 2006 and are now investing in different businesses. So we have, uh, and data center is one of the major investments they made. We have owners with a long-term perspective. Uh, uh, and we're uh, not focusing mainly on the local Norwegian market. When we are competing with the players you mentioned, uh, Digiplex and Base Farm, they are mainly uh, delivering service to the, to the Norwegian market. Our market is outside of mm -hmm. Norway. Yes. yes. But also, I think that it's the mix and what we're setting up. We are, we have two different sites. We have one site which is an old NATO ammunition facility inside a mountain, high security high availability, tier three uh, certified, most of the infrastructure is tier four. And we have another site which is certified at the same level, but where we have a huge area of land where we can actually build whatever the customer wants. So we can build tier one, tier two, tier three, mm. whatever they want and fit it to their scheme. And so we can be very flexible on both sides, but uh, on the second side, we can sort of do even more. We've also created an environment for the customers so that they get, uh, let's say, access to an ecosystem of partners, of services that we can offer to them so that we have a whole to offer to them. And that, that's, I mean, that's very key. Uh, on top of that, we put the operational excellence. Uh, we have never had a second of downtime. We have never broken a customer SLA. And we've been in operation for quite a few years. How many years? We've been in operation since 2013. Okay, it's close to five years on on, on our data center, and, and and adding on the the operational excellence, one of our focuses has to be has been to use some of the the operational model used in the IT industry, which I came from, uh, uh, in order to build uh, a solution which is fully automated, 
uh, self-healing, uh, uh, the amount of work performed when reporting has been reduced to, 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 to nothing because reports are generated automated, bills are generated automated. The customer get a full overview of what's happening in the data center through a web portal. We have been awarded with quite a lot of awards for that operational solution. So, so we are we not only have a two highly certified data center, but our operational model is also well renowned in the in the business. We did a customer survey amongst the customer uh, just a couple of months ago, and and the feedback we get from our current customers is that they are really satisfied with what we're doing. Building on the, the use of self-healing infrastructure and all sorts of things. Mm. So I guess you're using a lot of artificial, artificial intelligence techniques. We do, and, and we are, we're from Stavanger. Stavanger is the oil hub of Norway. And uh, as you know, there has been some, some issues with the oil price and, and uh, there's a lot of, 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 of highly educated people available in the market. And we have used them and used a little bit of that technology where you, you're operating uh, an oil rig which cannot fail from another location. So we use the same principles and same technologies in order to achieve that, and we have achieved it. Okay, and then looking into the next few months, and then this is for both of you. Well, mm -hmm. to start with, I guess having a data center inside a mountain is quite good in the days that we live in, because we mm -hmm. never know when someone's going to press that red button. Uh, but what are you planning in terms of expansion or acquisitions, building out the mountain data center? Uh, currently, we, we have the data center in Stavanger, which is 25,000 square meters of, of, of area inside a mountain. Currently, we have utilized 30% of that. We still have capacity to grow there. So you're, have you sold 30% yeah. or, you, or yeah. so you got 70% available? Yeah, okay. so approximately 70% uh, available. So we have room to grow at that data center. At uh, the Telemark location, we have acquired uh, quite a large piece of land. Currently, we have utilized 20% of that land, and we look into to, to expand in the land we own with more modules as, as, as we grow. There is also available land around our area. So our target at Telemark is currently 35 megawatts. Okay. Uh, we are looking at several sites as well. Uh, it, it is all driven by, driven on the customer yeah. In and out of Norway. In and out of Norway. And a, another thing to add on is that we're, as I said, we were owned by Smedvik. Smedvik has 30% of the portfolio within property. Uh, and they have a property division in Stavanger with highly skilled project manager, technical, uh, technical uh, skilled personnel. And when we're doing build outs, we are not uh, using external organization and external technicians, external project management people. We are using our internal Smedvik people in order to be able to deliver on time and deliver on quality. All of our customers' delivery today has been made on time and on quality. Okay. And, and the reason for that is that we have control of it ourselves. It is our owner's organization mm -hmm. who is doing that, that yeah, job for us. It. And then from a sales and marketing perspective, what's yeah. going to be your main uh, focus for next year? Uh, definitely to, to, to be very active in markets. Uh, we actually address both the, uh, let's say, ultra critical customers that really need you know, EMP security, 100% uh, uptime, uh, like banks, like... Uh, Health, like public uh, defense, people so you're like that. Starting to follow the industries, mm. in but we are also addressing the the let's say the cloud players in the world uh, that maybe or maybe not want to buy tier three. Maybe they want something simpler. We can do that. Um, we can deliver huge facilities. We can deliver edge. Um, I think the the one thing that's important for us towards the market is that we deliver to the, the players that are driving the market forward. Mm. And that's both enterprise, cloud, and uh, other players coming into the market. Okay, Tony and Peter, thanks a lot for talking to me. Um, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and also visit the website on www.dataeconomy.com. 